Hello and welcome to Coffee Lovers TV. I'm your host, Joseph Robertson. Very excited uh, to bring the show to you today. Before I dive in, um, I just wanted to talk a couple things from the last show. Um, so we had some, uh, uh, had some wonderful comments from some of you listeners and I'm very thankful for that. Thank you for jumping in. Um, and I wanted to address a couple things. So uh, you'll have noticed that um, I, I think I might have mentioned this a little bit on the last episode, but uh, when I'm tasting the coffee, I'm drinking it from a glass. Um, and there are a couple things. So in comparison to like when you do, um, I'm going to jump over to wine. When you do like a proper wine tasting, um, if you're tasting a lot of wines, you're usually tasting and spitting out the wine. And there's two reasons for that in wine. Number one is you don't want to drink a lot of alcohol. Um, I don't have that much of that problem when it, when it comes to tasting coffees. Um, number two, when you're spitting out the wine, you're also, um, I, I believe this is the case for wine. I know this is the case for coffee. And when you, when you are drinking something repeatedly, um, it's going to coat entirely your throat and that's going to essentially influence how you taste uh, follow-up drink. So if you were tasting a bunch of wines for a couple of reasons, um, you would be wanting to spit it out. Now in a, uh, like, what's the word I want to use? Pro I don't want to call it a proper coffee tasting. In a coffee cupping, which is the, the process that is used um, by professionals to grade and assess coffee, um, you brew coffee in cups and you taste it with a spoon and it's a very sim similar process. You you slurp and then you spit. And the reason for that is because you want to coat your palate with the flavor of the coffee, um, but you don't want to drink it. Um, a, if you're doing this 40 or 50 times, that can add up to a lot of caffeine for sure. But B, um, drinking the coffee can influence the taste of follow-up coffee. So for uh, a couple of reasons, I'm just tasting the coffee uh, from a glass as if I were drinking it for the most part. And there are two reasons for that. Number one, uh, at the moment, I'm just doing one coffee at a time. So I don't need to worry about influencing the taste of other coffees. And number two, um, I, want to, I want to share the experience of the coffee as if you were going to drink it yourself. And that's the only challenge I think with cupping coffee is that that's not how you drink the coffee at home. You certainly can, um, but the the it it does give you a really full vision of what is possible with the coffee. That's very true, um, and I can certainly slurp the coffee that I'm drinking from the glass, and I might do that a time or two. Um, but for the most part, I like to communicate sort of the experience that you are likely to have yourself. Um, so that's why I'm doing what I'm doing in terms of of the processes that I'm using. I'm just trying to communicate an experience that um, is more relatable. Um, another thing about the, the first video is I did a lot of sort of side, um, I went on a lot of, uh, well not a lot, I went on a couple sizable tangents where I talked about some major things like coffee processing and um, that sort of thing. So I think I'm going to try to refrain from doing those in these main um, episodes and I'll make other episodes where I can cover larger issue, larger like in information like that. And then I can point you to those um, episodes because that those sorts of subjects are going to come up regularly. So um, I'm going to try to keep it to that. Also, um, I, I'm going to cut off my rambliness on this video now and just say that uh, I do the weekly Cup of Joe show where I literally sit and talk about what I've been doing. Um, and so I'll cover more side things like this in detail. But I, w I do want to uh, continue this sort of back and forth. I like having the conversations with those of you watching. Um, that's really fun. So uh, thank you so much for your comments. Um, keep them coming when we do the show. Okay, so today um, this bag is totally incorrect. Uh, Number one, A, this coffee is roasted by Conduit Coffee. But what I brought today is a Kenya. Now, um, so here's the thing. So last week, I did the show with uh, the Campos Kenya. Hold on one second. 
cutting back. Last week, I did the show with this lovely Campos uh, Kenyan coffee. Um, and I mentioned on the show it'd be fun to see, uh, compare coffees, like the same coffee roasted by different roasters. Now, after I, ro after I did that show, um, I was visiting at Conduit, as I do, and Jesse showed me uh, a new Kenya that he has. Now I'm tasting the Kenya thinking, wow, this is serendipitous. <laughs> I think it'd be awesome to follow up and do the second show on another Kenya from the same region. Now, uh, it turned out that these Kenyas are quite a bit different um, in many respects, but I think it's still fun to, to just have a look. So um, just to refresh your memory, the Campos Kenya, the Barichu, is from the Nairi region. Um, and to quickly recap my uh, interpretation of this light, um, juicy, a uh, lot like peach juice was kind of my experience there. So um, we're going to set campus aside. You can, of course, go enjoy that show and learn more about that. Okay. Now, uh, the reason this bag is wrong on the conduit, uh, Kenya, is because I got kind of a little sneak peek. Um, the, the initial batch before Jesse had stamped the bags. So um, he does have this Kenya available. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to uh, read you a few details about it. Um, there's so much to know in coffee, I just can't possibly memorize everything. Uh, and I want to make sure that I give you a good mix of uh, accurate information as well as my interpretation of it and uh, my experience as well. Okay, so the Kenya that Conduit has is uh, from the Th Thiriku Wet Mill. The Thiriku Wet Mill is a co-op made up of uh, 2,200 members, 1,900 of which are active farmers. So it's a lot of farmers, um, and the, the average farm size is one and a half acres. So it's a lot of small farms. The, uh, it is also from the Nairi region in Kenya, um, and the varieties that are in this lot are... Um, Oh, I'm just going to say they're SL28, SL34, and some Riru11. I've actually not seen that one before, and I probably pronounced it wrong. Um, I'm going to do another video on varieties, so I'm going to kind of glaze over that right now, except to say that um, the SL28 and SL34 varieties were also in the Campos Coffee. Okay. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and read something about the process here. Timely and selective handpicking is carried out in Thiriku society. Cherry is delivered to the wet mill the same day it is picked. Cherry sorting is carried out at the wet mill prior to the pulping. Red ripe cherries are separated from under ripes, over ripes, and foreign matter, that being things that are not cherries. Processing utilizes clean river water, so it's a wet processing. And then sun drying is done before the coffee is delivered to the dry mill for further processing. Um, a lot of information in there. Again, I'm going to be doing uh, episodes on processing and that sort of thing. Um, so I'm going to have to uh, leave you hanging on some of that information for now, um, just so that I don't bog down this episode too much. OK, so Kenyan coffees. Um, I decided, I think what I would like to do, I'm just going to dive into this coffee here um, and I'm going to smell it, but what I actually did is I ground it just before I started recording uh, so I can um, smell the ground aroma, which I think will give me a clearer picture than just smelling into the bag, which sometimes can get muddled. Uh, so let's have a smell. It's interesting with the Kenyan coffees. I, um, I've not always been a fan. In fact, I did go through quite a period of finding that I didn't enjoy the Kenyan coffees. But lately, I've been really enjoying them. Um, they tend to have kind of a savoriness to them. I think uh, tomato is often a, an aroma and a taste that can be found. So this, this one uh, definitely has a savory aroma to it. Um, and I, and it, it's very peculiar. I can, I, can th I can think about what I'm smelling. 
and I can smell multiple things, but it, there's this, there's a thick richness to it. Um, there's a nice sweet edge. I want to say that, I want to say that I, I, I kind of smells like a really well-crafted and rich, uh, like tomato soup. But then if I, if I sit here and think, I can get, I can smell like citrus as well. Like, uh, maybe, maybe some, maybe some grapefruit or maybe, maybe orange. A lot of this stuff is very faint and it just kind of wafts in and out. Um, and it can be difficult to, to take the, the whole of what you're smelling as it, as the aromas coalesce and, and try to encapsulate what it is in, in the essence of one thing like orange. I keep going back to tomato though, which uh, could be fairly accurate. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, brew it. I can say that I've cheated a little bit because I've been enjoying this. Um, I mean, it's not really cheating. It does give me a chance to think about uh, the flavors and how this this uh, this tastes to me. So um, I know that uh, not to give anything away. But my, my taste reaction has not been that of tomato. It's been completely different. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and pause here and then uh, brew this and come back and we'll have a taste. Hello and welcome back. We're ready for the coffee. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention uh, about the origins of this Kenya. So um, uh, as I said, the Thiriku mill in the Nairi region. Um, that is where the coffee is produced. That is the group that uh, produces the coffee. The coffee is then imported here by Atlas importers. And then Jesse, the roaster at Conduit, um, gets the coffee from Atlas. So Jesse works with Atlas uh, to find interesting coffees and Atlas works with uh, producers like the uh, Thiriku mill and they are made up of the farmers so this is pretty much as direct trade as is practical for most um, coffee roasters uh, and it's a very good system there are there are importers who do a very good job of working with coffee producers to make sure that they're producing excellent coffee and that they're getting um, the the money that they deserve to get for the works that they're doing okay so onto this coffee, um, perhaps uh, one more thing, uh, ironically after my introduction, um, it is later in the afternoon today um, and I do not wish to consume more caffeine. So I will be uh, spitting out the coffee. My apologies for that, um, but I will try to be discreet. So <sighs> I do love the smell of brewed coffee. It's always, right after brew it's always very um very very rich uh, especially in the sugars this one has a uh, very light aroma i forgot to take a look let's just have a quick look at the uh, the beans here um it's a fairly Fairly light roasted coffee, light to medium, I suppose. Mm. Yeah, the, the beans have, coming out of the bag is that lovely, rich tomato soup smell. Very savory. But interestingly, and the reason I was looking at the lightness is because this was coming off very light um, in aroma. Uh, just light, sweet, almost fruity-like. Like, I don't get the... I don't get that same tomato smell at this point. Although maybe what it, what it is is more like a ripe tomato, um, like right off the vine. But let's have a pour. Okay. Again, I need to do comparisons of the uh, the the only thing that that looking at this tells me um, it doesn't tell me too much. I just like looking at the color. Um, the, the result in here is dependent entirely upon, 
uh, well, I mean, it, it's, it's affected certainly by the roast, uh, but it is dependent entirely upon uh, my brewing, um, how I was able to brew in this Chemex. Sweet vanilla. There's a vanilla, nice vanilla, kind of like, what am I thinking of? Kind of like vanilla icing on a cake. It's kind of like the aroma that I get from the glass. I'm waiting for it to cool a little bit. I think it's gonna be a little too hot. Um, but let me give it a try. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a little too hot at the moment. Um, the problem with the problem with drinking your coffee hot is that heat is very effective at blocking your taste. So um, what I got there, actually, it jumped straight past many, much of the flavors and went um, straight to the, the roastiness. Um, and this is not a dark roast, but I could taste um, the roasty edge. Um, which is just fine, not in a bad way. Um, I just think it, that was a matter of the heat blocking what I was tasting. Cool off now. I love the smell. It's not at all like the, the grounds. It's very uh, smooth and vanilla. Some more coming through there. I am drinking it too. <laughs> it's a little too hot for me to get the full taste and not drink it. There we go. I'm getting some fruit on there. Um, I think citrus. Still the vanilla is smooth. It's like, um, what am I thinking of? The, the, the fruit component is not, it's not like a particular fruit, but more like the sweetness of a fruit, if that makes any sense. some nice red cherry on there like um, maybe maybe even rainier cherry the the so that there's a nice there's a nice bright acidity to this that I think uh, I want to call, I could call citrus, but I could also call it um, like the bright juiciness of a rainier cherry, um, which is kind of, it's a not, it's like a, it's like a red cherry, but not as sweet. Um, so um, maybe a bit more tart, maybe that's the right name for it. But it's not, this isn't, um, this isn't coming off as, well, I'm going to say it isn't coming off as tea-like. Um, and I think that uh, I think that's the the vanilla and the body um, is is rich enough. Um, I'm gonna let this cool for a minute, and then I'm gonna come back um, just so that. Uh, just so that I can get a clearer picture. Okay, let's dive in again. Hmm. Much better. Ah, oh, it's a very smooth. It's a very smooth coffee. Um, I think I think on a simple level, I want to say it's like cherries and cream. 
because it's got this like vanilla creaminess to it but it's also got this nice sort of bright um uh a fruit like acidity or edge to it it's not really an edge it's just more like the the top part of it has this brightness to it that's really nice Mm -hmm. It hits it hits like the sides of my tongue really well and kind of um, just the the brightness just kind of dances around while the the vanilla smoothness just just kind of floats over everything. Uh, very nice coffee. Interestingly, in the in the aroma, definitely what I I would have expected in a Kenya in terms of savoriness. I mentioned earlier that um, in the past I've been turned away from Kenya's uh, just because the savory aspect doesn't hit me right. Um, and I think sometimes I also run into, uh, I run into other oddities. Um, strangely enough, so, uh, I, I, don't, I don't need to go into that right now. I'm getting off way off topic. I was going to say something about grapefruit and coffee. Um, but this has a, like on the, on the taste here, this just, it's not, it's not too complex. Um, and it's something that I could very easily enjoy just drinking without thinking about it too much. It's got a nice brightness to it, but a smooth, ed, a smooth sort of um, base that kind of carries it along. It's very good. Um, I wonder if I should add, uh, let, let me know, let me know in the comments if you'd be curious how coffees like this do with uh, adding things like milk to it um, that could become part of it that might make the shows a little too complicated but adding milk um, to a coffee uh, is involved <laughs> in terms of explaining what's going on because um, the milk fats uh, and the proteins in the milk um, interact with the fats and the acids in the coffee and there's a lot of, a lot of stuff going on there uh, and some coffees do really well in milk and some don't uh, and there's good reasons for that. Um, so it could be could be something we cover right now. The reason I ask is I'm sitting here trying to imagine. I think this I think this particular Kenya has the base um, to it in terms of the smoothness, the vanilla in the body to to perform well with uh, a bit of milk in it or cream or something like that. Um, and it's got a nice brightness to it. Um, I personally almost always have my coffee with nothing added. So that's usually my perspective. Excellent. Okay, here I am drinking coffee. I gotta stop, because I wanna sleep later. Um, <laughs> so you can find, um, actually I'm not sure you can find this Kenya online yet. Uh, let me double check. Uh, I'll add it to, uh, I'll add a link to Conduit in the description. Uh, and then it, when this coffee's on the on the website, I'll add the link directly to that to that coffee as well. So um, I love hearing from you. Please uh, give me your thoughts on the show. I'd love to know what you think, what you're interested in, um, what you like most about these episodes, uh, what you'd like to see more of, what you'd like to see less of. Um, I just love uh, chatting with you all about coffee. Um, thank you for tuning in, watching, and uh, listening. <laughs>